In finance, a convertible bond or convertible note or convertible debt is a type of bond that the holder can convert into a specified number of shares of common stock in the issuing company or cash of equal value. It is a hybrid security with debt and equity-like features. It originated in the mid-19th century and was used by early speculators such as Jacob Little and Daniel Drew to counter market cornering. Convertible bonds are most often issued by companies with a low credit rating and high growth potential to compensate for having additional value through the option to convert the bond to stock. A convertible bond typically has a coupon rate lower than that of similar non-convertible debt. The investor receives the potential upside of conversion into equity while protecting downside with cash flow from the coupon payments and the return of principal upon maturity. These properties lead naturally to the idea of convertible arbitrage, where a long position in the convertible bond is balanced by a short position in the underlying equity. From the issuer's perspective, the key benefit of raising money by selling convertible bonds is a reduced cash interest payment. The advantage for companies of issuing convertible bonds is that, if the bonds are converted to stocks, companies' debt vanishes. However, in exchange for the benefit of reduced interest payments, the value of shareholders' equity is reduced due to the stock dilution expected when bondholders convert their bonds into new shares types. The underwriters have been quite innovative and provided various variations of the initial convertible structure. Although no clear classification formally exists in the financial market it is possible to segment the convertible universe into the following subtypes. Vanilla convertible bonds are the most plain convertible structures. They grant the holder the right to convert into certain amount of shares determined according to a conversion price determined in advance. They may offer coupon regular payments during the life of the security and have a fixed maturity date where the nominal value of the bond is redeemable by the holder. This type is the most common convertible type and is typically providing the asymmetric returns profile and positive convexity often wrongly associated to the entire asset class. At maturity the holder would indeed either convert into shares or request the redemption at par depending on whether or not the stock price is above the conversion price. Mandatory convertibles are a common variation of the vanilla subtype, especially on the U.S. market. Mandatory convertible would force the holder to convert into shares at maturity, hence the term mandatory. Those securities would very often bear two conversion prices, making their profiles similar to a risk reversal option strategy. The first conversion price would limit the price where the investor would receive the equivalent of its bar value back in shares. The second would delimit where the investor will earn more than par. Note that if the stock price is below the first conversion price the investor would suffer a capital loss compared to its original investment. Mandatory convertibles can be compared to forward selling of equity at a premium. Reverse convertibles are a less common variation, mostly issued synthetically. They would be opposite of the vanilla structure. The conversion price would act as a knock-in short call option. As the stock price drops below the conversion price the investor would start to be exposed to the underlying stock performance and no longer able to redeem at par its bond. This negative convexity would be compensated by a usually high regular coupon payment. Packaged convertibles or sometimes bond plus option structures are simply a straight bonds and a call option warrant wrapped together. Usually the investor would be able to then trade both legs separately. Although the initial payoff is similar to a plain vanilla one, the packaged convertibles would then have different dynamics and risks associated with them since at maturity the holder would not receive some cash or shares but some cash and potentially some share. They would for instance miss the modified duration mitigation effect usual with plain vanilla convertibles structures. Additional features any convertible bond structure, on top of its type, would bear a certain range of additional features as defined in its issuance prospectus. Conversion price, the nominal price per share at which conversion takes place. 
This number is fixed at the issuance but could be adjusted under some circumstance described in the issuance prospectus. You could have more than one conversion price for non-vanilla convertible issuances. Issuance premium. Difference between the conversion price and the stock price at the issuance. Conversion ratio. The number of shares each convertible bond converts into. It may be expressed per bond or on a percentum basis. Maturity, redemption date, final payment date of a loan or other financial instrument, at which point the principal is due to be paid. In some cases, there is no maturity date. This is often the case with preferred convertibles. Final conversion date, final date at which the holder can request the conversion into shares, might be different from the redemption date. Coupon. Periodic interest payment paid to the convertible bondholder from the issuer could be fixed or variable or equal to zero. Yield. Yield of the convertible bond at the issuance date could be different from the coupon value if the bond is offering a premium redemption. In those cases the yield value would determine the premium redemption value and intermediary put redemption value. Convertibles could bear other more technical features depending on the issuer needs. Call features. The ability of the issuer to call a bond early for redemption. This should not be mistaken for a call option. A soft call would refer to a call feature where the issuer can only call under certain circumstances, typically based on the underlying stock price performance. A hard call feature would not need any specific conditions beyond a date. That case the issuer would be able to recall a portion or the totally of the issuance at the call price after a specific date. Put features. The ability of the holder of the bond to force the issuer to repay the loan at a date earlier than the maturity. These often occur as windows of opportunity every three or five years and allow the holders to exercise their right to an early repayment. Contingent conversion. Restrict the ability of the convertible bondholders to convert into equities. Typically, restrictions would be based on the underlying stock price and or time. Reverse convertibles in that respect could be seen as a variation of a mandatory bearing a contingent conversion feature based. More recently some COCO's issuances have been based on tier 1 capital ratio for some large bank issuers. Reset Conversion price would be reset to a new value depending on the underlying stock performance. Typically, would be in cases of underperformance. Change of control event. Conversion price would be readjusted in case of a takeover on the underlying company. There are many subtype of ratchet formula. Their impact for the bondholder could be small to significant. Often, this clause would grant as well the ability for the convertible bondholders to put, i.e., ask for the early repayment of their bonds. Structure and terminology. Due to their relative complexity, convertible bond investors could refer to the following terms while describing convertible bonds. Parity. Immediate value of the convertible if converted. Typically obtained as current stock price multiplied by the conversion ratio expressed for a base of 100. May also be known as exchange property. Bond floor. Value of the fixed income element of a convertible i.e. Not considering the ability to convert into equities. Premium. Defined as current convertible price minus the parity. Exchangeable bond. Convertible bond where the issuing company and the underlying stock company are different companies. This distinction is usually made in terms of risk i.e. equity and credit risk being correlated. In some cases the entities would be legally distinct, but not considered as exchangeable as the ultimate guarantor being the same as the underlying stock company. Synthetic Synthetically structured convertible bond issued by an investment bank to replicate a convertible payoff on a specific underlying bond. Most reverse convertibles are synthetics. Please note the packaged convertibles are not considered to be synthetics since the issuer would not be an investment bank. They would only act as underwriter. Similarly, a replicated structure using straight bonds and options would be considered as a package structure. Markets and Investor Profiles 
the global convertible bond market is relatively small, with about US$400 billion. United States dollars. As a comparison the straight corporate bond market would be about US$14,000 billion. United States dollars. Among those 400 BN, about 320 billion United States dollars are vanilla convertible bonds, the largest subsegment of the asset class. Convertibles are not spread equally and some slight differences exist between the different regional markets. North America, about 50% of the global convertible market, mostly from the USA. This market is more standardized than the others with convertible structures being relatively uniform. Regarding the trading, the American convertible market is centralized around trace which helps in terms of price transparency. One other particularity of this market is the importance of the mandatory convertibles and preferred especially for financials. Most of the trading operation are based in New York, EMEA, European, Middle Eastern and African issuances are trading usually out of Europe, London being the biggest node followed by Paris and to a lesser extent Frankfurt and Geneva. It represents about 25% of the global market and shows a greater diversity in terms of structures. Because of that lack of standardization, it is often considered to be more technical and unforgiving than the American market from a trading perspective. A very tiny amount of the volumes is traded on exchange while the vast majority is done OTC without a price reporting system. Liquidity is significantly lower than on the Northern American market. Trading convention are not uniform. French convertibles would trade dirty in units while the other countries would trade clean in notional equivalent. Asia, this region represents about 17% of the total market, with an overall structure similar to the EMEA market albeit with more standardization across the issuances. Most of the trading is done in Hong Kong with a minor portion in Singapore. Japan. This region represents about 8% of the total market as of January 2013 in spite of being in the past comparable in size to the Northern American market. It mostly shrunk because of the low interest environment making the competitive advantage of lowering coupon payment less appealing to issuers. One key specificity of the Japanese market is the offering price of issuance being generally above 100, meaning the investor would effectively bear a negative yield to benefit from the potential equity underlying upside. Most of the trading is done out of Tokyo. Convertible bond investors get split into two broad categories, hedged and long-only investors, hedged arbitrage swap investors, proprietary trading desk or hedged funds using as core strategy convertible arbitrage which consists in, for its most basic iteration, as being long the convertible bonds while being short the underlying stock. Buying the convertible while selling the stock is often referred to as being on swap. Hedged investors would modulate the different risks by putting in place one or more hedge. Inherently, market makers are hedged investors as they would have a trading book during the day and or overnight held in a hedged fashion to provide the necessary liquidity to pursue their market making operations. Long only, outright investors, convertible investors who will own the bond for their asymmetric payoff profiles they would typically be exposed to the various risk. Please note that global convertible funds would typically hedge their currency risk as well as interest rate risk in some occasions. However volatility, equity and credit hedging would typically be excluded from the scope of their strategy. The splits between those investors differ across the regions. In 2013, the American region was dominated by hedged investors while EMEA was dominated by long-only investors. Globally the split is about balance between the two categories. Valuation. See also. Bond option hashtag embedded options. Lattice model hashtag hybrid securities. In theory, the market price of a convertible debenture should never drop below its intrinsic value. The intrinsic value is simply the number of shares being converted at par value times the current market price of common shares. 
The three main stages of convertible bond behavior are in the money convertible bonds, at the money convertible bonds, in the money conversion price is less than equity price, at the money conversion price is equals equity price, at the money conversion price is greater than equity price. In the money ECBs are considered as being within area of equity. At the money ECBs are considered as being within area of equity and debt. Out the money ECBs are considered as being within area of debt. From a valuation perspective, a convertible bond consists of two assets, a bond and a warrant. Valuing a convertible requires an assumption of the underlying stock volatility to value the option and the credit spread for the fixed income portion that takes into account the firm's credit profile and the ranking of the convertible within the capital structure. Using the market price of the convertible, one can determine the implied volatility or implied spread. This volatility credit dichotomy is the standard practice for valuing convertibles. What makes convertibles so interesting is that, except in the case of exchangeables, one cannot entirely separate the volatility from the credit. Higher volatility tends to accompany weaker credit. In the case of exchangeables, the credit quality of the issuer may be decoupled from the volatility of the underlying shares. The true artists of convertibles and exchangeables are the people who know how to play this balancing act. A simple method for calculating the value of a convertible involves calculating the present value of future interest and principal payments of the cost of debt and adds the present value of the warrant. However, this method ignores certain market realities including stochastic interest rates and credit spreads, and does not take into account popular convertible features such as issuer calls, investor puts, and conversion rate resets. The most popular models for valuing convertibles with these features are finite difference models as well as the more common binomial and trinomial trees. Since 1991-92, most market makers in Europe have employed binomial models to evaluate convertibles. Models were available from INSEAD, Trend Data of Canada, Bloomberg LP and from Home Developed Models, amongst others. These models needed an input of credit spread, volatility for pricing, and the risk-free rate of return. The binomial calculation assumes there is a bell-shaped probability distribution to future share prices, and the higher the volatility, the flatter is the bell shape. Where there are issuer calls and investor puts, these will affect the expected residual period of optionality at different share price levels. The binomial value is a weighted expected value, taking readings from all the different nodes of a lattice expanding out from current prices and taking account of varying periods of expected residual optionality at different share price levels. See lattice model hashtag hybrid securities. The three biggest areas of subjectivity are the rate of volatility used, for volatility is not constant and whether or not to incorporate into the model a cost of stock borrow for hedge funds and market makers. The third important factor is the dividend status of the equity delivered if the bond is called, as the issuer may time the calling of the bond to minimize the dividend cost to the issuer. Uses for investors Convertible bonds are usually issued offering a higher yield than obtainable on the shares into which the bonds convert. Convertible bonds are safer than preferred or common shares for the investor. They provide asset protection, because the value of the convertible bond will only fall to the value of the bond floor. At the same time, convertible bonds can provide the possibility of high equity-like returns. Also, convertible bonds are usually less volatile than regular shares. Indeed, a convertible bond behaves like a call option. Therefore, if C is the call price and S the regular share then, in consequence, since we get, which implies that the variation of C is less than the variation of S, which can be interpreted as less volatility, the simultaneous purchase of convertible bonds and the short sale of the same issue as common stock is a hedge fund strategy known as convertible arbitrage.
The motivation for such a strategy is that the equity option embedded in a convertible bond is a source of cheap volatility, which can be exploited by convertible arbitrages. In limited circumstances, certain convertible bonds can be sold short, thus depressing the market value for a stock, and allowing the debt holder to claim more stock with which to sell short. This is known as death spiral financing. Redemption options, strategies, soft put, can be redeemed for cash, stock or notes or a combination of all three at the company's discretion. Hard put, payable only in cash. Protective put, buying a put option for the underlying bond security. Subordinated put, convertible put, convert to share by paying a charge.